If you're a web developer, you've probably heard of Jamstack. Coined in 2015 by the CEO of Netlify, Matthias Bildman, Jamstack consists of pre-rendered static HTML that relies on client-side APIs and JavaScript to provide interactive elements. Some of the many pros of Jamstack is that it's fast, scalable, cheap, secure, and SEO friendly. There are a lot of popular Jamstack frameworks. The main ones are Next.js, Nuxt.js, Gatsby, Hugo, and Jekyll. Out of these five, Next.js is by far the largest in terms of market share, beating out second place Nuxt.js by over three times. In this video, you will learn Next.js by building a developer portfolio complete with a blog. You will also learn some other awesome technologies in the process, like Chalker UI, Next MDX Remote, Next SEO, Vercel, and more. As always, all the code for this video can be found on my GitHub. To create a Next.js website, we can use the command yarn create next app. When we run this command, all the necessary files will be created. The node modules folder holds all of our yarn and npm packages, such as React Bootstrap, Lodash, and Next. The pages folder holds, you guessed it, our pages. For example, index.js can be reached at the root of our website. In development, this is http colon slash slash localhost port 3000. If we created a blog page and called the file blog.js, that page can be reached at localhost slash blog. There are two exceptions to this. The first is underscore app.js. This is a special file in Next.js. It is the entry point to our app. At the bare minimum, app.js includes a function that returns the page component. We can also import global CSS, add custom error handling, and do a couple of other advanced things inside of here. We'll be coming back to this file in a bit when we add Chalker UI for our CSS framework. The second exception is underscore document.js. This file is optional because Next.js provides it if we don't create it. If we need to add something to the HTML or body tags of our site, we will need to override this file. We can do that easily by creating it and adding the following code. One of the nice things about Next.js is its support for dynamic routes. Because we are making a developer portfolio, let's say we have a bunch of projects. We can create a folder called project, and inside of it create a file called project.js. The brackets tell Next that this route will be dynamic. Now if we navigate to the following route, we don't see any errors. We can also replace the 1 with a 2, and that works as well. What if we wanted to grab that dynamic route and display it to the user? We can use next router for this. Inside of our file, import use router from next slash router. Declare a variable router and set it equal to the use router hook we just imported. We can now use this variable to access a bunch of different properties. In our case, we can grab the dynamic route using router.query. Now we can use this anywhere inside of our component. The final thing you will notice inside of the pages folder is the API folder. This is where any API routes will live. Because Jamstack does not have a server, all of the data and authentication can be done using API routes. Next provides us with a simple example in which we are returning some JSON. This can be accessed on the route localhost port 3000 slash API slash hello. We can also consume this API endpoint inside of our application and display the data to the user, which we'll see in a bit. The next folder is the public folder. Inside here, we can put any static images, GIFs, favicons, text files like robots.txt, and XLM files such as our sitemap. The last folder is the styles folder. Here we can add any CSS or SAS style sheets. We can go ahead and delete this folder because we will be using Chalker UI along with CSS and JS to style our app. Now that you have a high level understanding, let's start building our developer portfolio. Let's first add Chalker UI to our app by adding the yarn packages. This is not a tutorial on Chalker, so I will not be going into much detail on it. However, I do have a lot of Chalker tutorials on this channel if you are interested. Next, all we need to do is wrap our app with the Chalker provider inside of underscore app.js. The first thing we want to do is create a page layout component that we can use in every page. Create a folder named components, and inside of it, create a file named container.js. Go ahead and add the following code. The children text you see is the content for each page. Next, let's create our navbar component. Create a file named navbar.js and another file named darkmodeswitch.js. 
For the dark mode switch, we are simply using Chakra's toggle color mode hook to determine the current color mode and style accordingly. I am also using Chakra icons in this example, so you will need to import those. Now inside of navbar.js, import the switch component. There are two things I want to point out inside of this navbar that are Next.js specific. First, we are using use router again to style the active item differently. Router.path name gives us a slug. Second, we are using next slash link, which is a special Next.js component. It acts like an A tag, but is for client side transitions between routes. It is common to wrap next slash link around an A tag. If you do this, be sure to use the pass href property, otherwise you will render two A tags and hurt your SEO. Now that our page container component is complete, let's import this into index.html. Let's also add some basic information to this homepage, like name, description, and a simple call to action. Let's take a look at one of the best features of Next.js, API routes. Earlier in this video, we took a look at hello.js, which is a simple API route. Let's create our own API route to fetch our GitHub repositories from our GitHub account. We can do this using SWR. SWR is a React hook created by the Next.js team. It handles caching, revalidation, focus tracking, refetching on interval, and much more. To use it, we first need to import it. We can then use it like such. We now have the data returned stored inside of a variable data, and if we have any errors, it will be stored inside the variable error. The data is coming from the API root github.js, a file we will create momentarily. Let's first add three return statements to handle our different states. An error state, a loading state, and a success state. Now inside of the API folder, create a file named github.js. The syntax for an API root is as such, where rec is an instance of http.incoming message, and res is an instance of http.server response. We can now use a vanilla JavaScript to fetch data from the GitHub API. As always, refer to GitHub's official docs for any help with this. Back inside of projects.js, we can map over the data and display it. You can see we can also get the length of the data using data.repos.length. Recall earlier in this video, we made a dynamic route accessible on localhost slash projects slash PID. We can take advantage of that here by linking to that route, passing in the project name. Then, from this page, we can fetch additional data on that project, or we could even pass it as part of the query string. I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys. To create a blog, we'll be using NextMDX Remote. We can store blog posts wherever we want because we'll be using get static props to fetch them. In this video, and in most cases, storing them locally is the best option. Let's create a folder called Posts and add our first blog post. We can store the important parts of the post like the title, description, and publish date in what's called the front matter. The rest of the content can be added below as markdown. One of the cool things about MDX is that you can add interactive JavaScript components inside of the post. Let's go ahead and add our dark mode switch. Now that we have a blog post, we can create a page named blog.js, and inside of here, we'll query all the posts and display them in a list view. Before we do this, we will need some information regarding the path to the posts. Let's make a new folder called lib and a new file called mdxutils.js. This file will export two variables, the path to our blog posts and a list of all the mdx files inside of this path. Be sure to add fs and path via yarn. Inside of our blog.js page, import both of those variables as well as fs, matter, and path. Gray matter is a new package, so be sure to add that via yarn. Inside of getStaticProps, we can declare a variable named posts and map over all of our blog posts, which are stored in the post file paths variable. We can get the source of each post using fs and then extract the content and data using gray matter. Finally, return all the posts at a prop. Now we can pass the posts prop into our component and map over each of the posts, displaying them to the user. We are using the as property on the next link, which is the path shown in the browser URL bar. You can see that we can grab any part of the front matter by using post.data.the name of it, so title or description. The final step is to make a dynamic page for each individual blog post. Inside of our blog folder, create a file named slug.js. Add the following imports 
and our basic post page body. Inside of get static paths, declare a variable paths and set it equal to host file paths. Recall this is being imported from mdxutils.js and represents a list of all mdx files inside of posts path directory. Next, remove file extensions for page paths and finally map the path into the static paths object required by Next.js. Then return the paths and set fallback to false. Inside of get static props, we are doing something very similar to what we did in blog.js. Instead here, we are only working with one blog post, the requested one. Declare a variable post file path and set it to the current URL. Grab the source of the post using fs. Next, parse through the source using gray matter. Finally, serialize the content and pass in any MDX options such as prism for code styling. Then return the source and front matter. In our page component, pass both of these variables in. We are setting the content of the post inside of the tag MDX remote. You can see we are also passing in the source and something called components. The components are what the markdown maps to in HTML, and it is also where we pass in our custom components. For example, we can declare a custom A tag like such. We can also set our dark mode switch equal to our dark mode switch component. You should now be able to visit individual blog posts. At this point, we have a simple developer portfolio with a home page, a projects page, a blog page, and a blog index page. Now, if nobody can find the site, it doesn't do us any good. So to make this site rank well in Google, we need to add SEO. We can do that inside of Next.js by using the package Next SEO. Once we have this, create a file named next-seo.config.js. Inside of here, add our default SEO, such as the title, the description, the carnicle, and a couple of other info. As you can see, this package also accepts open graph. Once we have that, import our next SEO config file and our default SEO from the next SEO package inside of underscore app.js. Add this right above our page props component. So right now, all of our SEO is the same for each page. However, we want to change it based on the page we're on. To do this, let's open up index.js, import next SEO from next SEO, declare our variables, URL, title, and description, and we can use it inside of our page as such. Now go ahead and do this for each of the pages. So index, project, and blog. Now the SEO for individual blog posts will be a bit different. Inside of our components folder, create a file named blog SEO, .js. Import next SEO from next SEO and also import article JSON LD. This will take our SEO one step further and tell Google that this is a article. Declare a variable date, making it a new date, and we can add a featured image if you have one. This could be an image for the blog post itself, given in the front matter, or it could be the featured image for your entire site, which is stored in the public folder. Finally, return next SEO, passing in all of those variables. And secondly, return the article JSON LD, also passing in all of those variables. Always refer to the next SEO documentation for more info. Once we have that, inside of slug.js, import our block SEO component and add that right above of our container. Now we need to pass in the front matter and we also need to pass in the URL. So to get the current URL, we can use use router. And then we'll add a variable slug and we'll set that as router.asPath.replace slash blog with an empty string. We can then concatenate that to our URL slash blog. After all this work, our website is finally complete. Most tutorials on YouTube will stop here, but I'm going to show you how to ship this website. Versal is the company behind Next.js, so it makes sense to deploy it there. Navigate to versal.com. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one. It is 100% free forever on the hobby plan. Before we deploy our website, it needs to be on GitHub or another Git platform. Once that is done, click the new project button and select your project repository. You will need to add the Versal app to your GitHub account so it has permissions. Give your app a project name if you want a different name from your GitHub repo and add any environment variables if you have any. We did not use any in this crash course. 
finally click deploy. After a few minutes, you should be able to see your site live. I hope you enjoyed this crash course on Next.js. We only covered the basics and skimmed past a lot of cool features, so here are some resources to keep learning. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one.